Uh, good day, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our first episode of the McFin Insurance Dialogue, a new initiative to get the uh, African insurance market talking about pertinent issues affecting our markets, affecting our business. Today, I've got uh, experts from various uh, companies and various uh, markets as well. Um, by way of introduction, firstly, I'll introduce Yara. Yara uh, is from Mozambique. She will give her own uh, full bio. Uh, and then we've got uh, Sharon. Sharon is from Mauritius. She will also give a full bio. Uh, Charles from Tanzania and Kelvin Zimbora from Zimbabwe. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you may briefly introduce yourselves. Thank you, uh, uh, Simba, uh, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Charles Chanya. I am the underwriter uh, heading uh, facultative business uh, Grand Re Tanzania. Uh, my, my background is basically uh, insurance. I have uh, over 10 years experience in, in the insurance, uh, insurance uh, market. I am uh, Sharon, Sharon Ning from Nima Insurance Managing Agency. Uh, we are based in Mauritius and we are in MG. And I have a background in engineering and insurance reinsurance. Uh, hello, my name is Yara Souza. I'm the underwriting manager at Emeritus Re Mozambique. I'm a civil engineer and a chartered insurer with over nine years experience in insurance and reinsurance. Uh, thank you very much, Simba. Uh, my name is Kelvin Zimbora. I'm currently the operations manager for Tropical Reinsurance uh, Zimbabwe. My background is basically applied physics with uh, IT, and I've been in the reinsurance space for over 13 years. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's a quite uh, experienced panel that we have today. I hope the discussion will be uh, worth the value for our viewers. Now, just to introduce the topic, today we are discussing the practice of rate undercutting in insurance pricing. Uh, I should say, uh, maybe let's talk about of it uh, as the notion, it's a notion of um, rate undercutting. Uh, we're going to go into the details of that. But just to give a background to the discussion, we are talking precisely about the short-term uh, or non-life insurance industry. That's the basis of our discussion in terms of insurance pricing uh, and also as practiced in the insurance uh, markets and insurance markets include the mainland Africa and uh, the African islands. Just as an introduction for my side, uh, I just want to uh, put some background information about insurance so that everyone is able to, to follow uh, where we are coming from with this discussion and why we are discussing rate making. Now, the insurance model uh, is based on the insurers promising to pay future claims uh, in return for a premium, which is a small amount uh, now. And part of the mystery for the insurance model is that the future claims and the future costs of managing the business are not known upfront. And this poses a, a challenge in terms of determining the appropriate price for insurance products. If you look at any other business, whether you're selling tomatoes, you're selling fridges, or you're selling cars, the basic principle is that uh, the price for the product uh, should be equal to the cost of producing and delivering that product plus the targeted profit for the investor or for the producer or the seller of that product. But in the insurance industry, that model is not applicable strictly in, in that formula because part of the biggest component is the cost, which is a future value. We don't know when you're setting the price, we don't know what the cost is. So this is the background to how the insurance business model uh, operates as far as the pricing of the products works. And also, one thing also to look at is if you look at um, the, the pricing of the products, there are a lot of determinants, our panel members will talk about them, but one of the determinants is exposure. So the risks that are insured by insurers, whether from country to country or from city to city, 
uh, or from one company to another company, they all carry varying degrees of exposure. And therefore, that also poses another challenge to say what price should be applicable from one client to the other. Um, I hope I've given a fitting background to this discussion um, so that at least we understand where we are coming from. Now at this stage, uh, may I open up to our panel discussion for us to explore this topic. Um, and Charles, if I must start with you, what is a premium head? Uh, if you can explain to our viewers. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Simba, for, for this wonderful, wonderful topic here of today. And of course, much appreciation to you and the McFin team for, uh, you know, for choosing me as uh, one of the of the panelists. To go into the detail, premium rate is basically a unit unit price charged on the risky exposure which is being proposed for the insurance. Yeah. And of course, it's, it's normally uh, expressed in percentage. That's why it's, it's called a rate. So basically, simply it can be a price uh, for the risk exposure, uh, which is uh, for the risk exposure uh, proposed for the insurance. So in a, in a very, very simple uh, meaning of uh, the premium rate, I can say. Okay, so if your client walks in uh, to a broker, or to an insurance company, and you just say, uh, this is your rate, do you expect that the client should generally just understand what the rate is? Remember, when I go to buy bread, when I ask for the price, uh, I'm told bread is 50 cents or whatever currency it is in your country. Is it the same with an insurance product or with the price of insurance? Now, uh, uh, as I said, uh, this this uh, unit price is expressed in the, in the, in percentage. So, to get the actual amount of money which the client need to pay, is is you take that uh, uh, premium rate times the exposure, and normally the exposure is in insured value or the limit of uh, indemnity, depending on the class of business which has uh, been proposed for the insurance. So. Uh, normally, the rate is, is included, but to bring more clarity to the clients, is basically you multiply that rate, the premium rate, so that to get the actual uh, price, to get the actual number, which is uh, you know um, uh, charged to the client. Okay, Yara is uh, Charles too technical with us here. <laughs> no, it's not to thank you. It's, it, it is true. Actually, I would say, that, okay, an insurance premium is the amount of money that the consumer will pay to get cover, to get mm. protection. Okay. And, and who determines that price? Um. The underwriters. The underwriters would determine the price, the price according to the exposure, according to the age, like let's say the type of coverage, the amount of coverage, or even the last history of the clients. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I understand, you know, different markets have got uh, different prices, uh, and, and this is an, an open question to, to all of us panelists. Um, is there a difference that you notice in markets uh, or a specific practice that you notice in, in, in your markets? For example, there might be an inclination towards regulators or government regulating the pricing of the insurance products, or uh, is the market just operating on a free market basis? Uh, maybe just a sense of what the practice do you have uh, in your various markets? Uh, Sharon? In Mauritius, uh, the regulator does not impose any any uh, premium rates or or any but different classes of business. Um, but it's more, I would say, a price war between the different seedants. Because, for example, if a client wants uh, to have insurance for a property insurance for their house, they would just go to different seedants uh, to um, ask for a quote. And uh, every student would be free to quote their own company policy and, and own underwriting and premium rates that they have 
agreed on on um, in the company. So you would get different different prices from them, but it would not be a very big difference, I would say. But um, Mauritius is a very competitive market, and yeah, everyone tried to beat the other one. Yeah, uh, Kelvin, is, is the practice different in uh, Zimbabwe? Yes, um, it's slight. I'll say it's slightly different. Um, I think uh, some time in the past, um, the were recommended minimum rates that were then proposed uh, by the regulator in terms of uh, not company specific per se, but in terms of saying um, <clears throat> industry specific to say if you're probably in the mining sector. Uh, you're looking at a minimum rate of so much. If you're in the paper industry, if you're in the uh, wooden pulp, this was mainly for your fire risks. And mm -hmm. um, mainly minimum rates were then set for mortar. But um, over the years, what we've seen is that uh, there has been a deviation from uh, those set minimums. And um, in so much as I'd like to thank you for bringing up this uh, topic <laughs> in terms of them saying, um, what then is um, rate undercutting and uh, what effects do the, does it have on the insurance industry per se? Okay, uh, Charles, is, is the practice any different from your side? Uh, in Tanzania, the practice is more or less the same like uh, what they do in Zimbabwe. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, the minimum rate, uh, which basically was gazetted by the government. So all the insurance players in the market need to follow that but of course that is the minimum you you can charge more than that but you cannot charge less than that so uh, and of course it's, it's for all the classes flow from, from motor to to fire and other uh, except the few uh special special class like uh, uh aviation perhaps uh direct and officers liability so basically uh the others we have like a bible which you know we are not uh, supposed to go under what is spe uh, specified in that uh, rate i've been trading in a market where everything is allowed yeah. <laughs> it is a free market there is no minimum rate yeah. Yeah. You see, and, and then you can imagine how the rates are, are developing over the years. So it is really dropping every day. So it is a free market. Okay. So there's different practice. And obviously, where there's different practice, you are bound to also have quite a variation uh, in, in the prices. You expect uh, a wider range in terms of the prices. Uh, Sharon, uh, is there a correct rate, so to say, uh, in insurance? Uh, I don't think there is a correct rate for insurance pricing. Um, yes, the underwriters will make use of actual tables uh, and everything, but at the end of the day, uh, it all depends on di different factors um, and how the underwriter will interpret um, them. So, for example, um, an underwriter will have its own underwriting philosophy, its own guidelines. So this will also affect the, the, the rate, the insurance pricing. And there will also be uh, the market practice or trends. And depending on in which territory you are and, and the trends there, the risk country, um, the type of coverage as well. And the loss history, very important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And also, I think now uh, there's also the hard market or the soft market um, because of COVID and the reasons now I think we are starting to get into the hard market. And I think all these factors will affect uh, the insurance pricing. And there's also competition as well, which can come into play. That's, that's interesting. So, uh, Yara, you are operating in an open market. Uh, yes. <laughs> It's just just like Mauritius. <laughs> is you know, it? What happened is, as an underwriter, most of the times it's our instinct, it's our the way we perceive a risk that we determine the type of rates that we will be applying. It is something very personal that will depend on the instinct and the capacity to absorb risk of each underwriter. 
So most of the times, as I said, we operate in a very free market and we have to trust our instincts or our background about the risk or about the behavior of certain clients. So it is something we have the gut feeling. You have to <laughs> be always aware of what happens. So that's it. Yeah. Uh, Kelvin, th there must be some basis to, write, to pricing, right? Is, is there a correct rate? I, I want to say there is a correct or an incorrect rate. Um, like the previous, uh, well, like what Kiara and Sharon have alluded to, to say um, the rating is not an exact science. To mm. say, for instance, uh, one plus one is two, wherever you go, regardless of, uh, of the market. But mm. um, my belief is that um, for each particular type of risk, there is um, a minimum cost. You know, mm. like insurance, like being any other business, um, mm. We are uh, the shareholders uh, expect a profit. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, insurance is not a dollar for dollar transaction. Um, and at the same time, we are selling a promise uh, mm -hmm. to, to pay for future losses. So in a nutshell, I'd say, no, there is no uh, correct rate. Uh, there is no incorrect rate. But mm -hmm. um, as the previous speakers have said, um, the pricing then varies from market to market. Um, yeah. from individual underwriter to underwriter um, depend economic even fundamentals play in as well uh, mm -hmm. competition and, and the like thanks I can see Charles is <laughs> <laughs> no, that smile is, a, is an agreement or <laughs> yeah uh, basically I totally agree with the with the previous speakers because uh, you know you, you come to the premium rates the way you feel the risk mm. or the way you feel the exposure. And how do you feel the exposure? Basically, you feel the exposure depending on your company objective at that specific period of a time. Mm. And of course, you will feel the exposure depending on the competition around your market. And of course, you will feel uh, uh, the exposure depending on how that specific risk has been uh, performance uh, performing for the past year. So we can basically charge different, you know, the same risk I can charge different from what Kevin can charge. So there is no uh, correct debt as long as the underwrite is comfortable with, with, uh, with the price specifically would be the correct uh, rate according to him or her but it would be uh, the incorrect rate according to the other person depending on how you feel the risk yeah, yeah. So, so 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 charles charles and kelvin uh, i think uh, zimbabwe and tanzania there is uh, a history of market rates as you said i mean maybe that that is no longer the case there must have been a basis of coming up with those threats, uh, which should have been in some way uh, a correct way of looking at things to say at the bare minimum, this is what you should charge. I'm trying to get us to maybe explain to our clients if they're watching now to say, OK, when you come up with the price, this is, you know, some of the factors that we put in to come up with the price. Um, and this is maybe how the pricing is done. Uh, maybe if you want to allude to that. Okay, uh, thank you, Simba. I think um, basically what was uh, was done in the Zimbabwe market was that um, actuaries were actually engaged uh, in terms of then assessing the um, caliber of risks that uh, insurance companies were writing. I think mainly stemming from um, the results um, that are then published by uh, the insur respective insurers in terms of then saying. Um, how have they been performing um, certain classes of business? How have they been performing? And I think um, it, go, it went back over several years to say, you look at um, how generally uh, the risks that have been underwritten in the Zimbabwe market have been performing vis-a-vis -vis the specific uh, line of business that that uh, particular risk is in. So I think that then became the fundamental basis of which these minimum rates were then drawn up. 
But um, I don't know, unlike uh, what uh, my colleague Charles has alluded to, uh, these were not um, hard and fast to say, if you go below this particular rate, you will then face uh, some censure from the regulator. No, uh, these were purely just uh, recommended minimums. They were just a, sort of like a guideline that you then use. So obviously, from our side, um, what I would then take to it is to then say, each risk brings its own different uh, form of expo risk in terms of, uh, in, you know, insurance is a is a, um, is an industry that makes use of the law of large numbers to say the the misfortunes of the few are then uh, catered for by the fortunes of the many. So, in terms of then how you then price um, a particular risk, it then depends on the exposure it's bringing into my. Uh, risk pool. Um, and Charles, obviously, so I understand from Kelvin that the the minimum rates are actually uh, determined, which means the actuaries who were engaged to actually look at the history of losses in the market and uh, come up with what they would consider to be minimum rates. And I, I understand that min when you say minimum rates, this means maybe a pro point at which you break even and make a reasonable uh, a profit. This was a, a same uh, approach. Um, I don't know the uh, background towards uh, the recommended uh, rate in uh, Zimbabwe, but uh, in Tanzania, uh, back in 2013-2014, uh, basically the insurance company were, were not uh, making uh, good underwriting results. Uh, so the association of uh, Tanzanian insurers uh, basically while trying to get a solution on, on how they can improve their, their underwriting results, basically they, they appointed actuaries uh, who are uh, whom reviewed the experience of each and every insurance company and of course they combined, then they came up with uh, this uh, minimum rate. So it was basically a market driving experience the best sort of uh, exercise which was done by 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 actuaries so it's basically if i can say a similar methodology and when you talk of the involvement of actuaries you're talking of numbers you're talking of facts uh, something like that engineer here how how does the client know that i'm getting a good deal here in mozambique it is basically when they pay less premium <laughs> we can, you can come up with all explanations and you go with the client step by step explaining why and the, all the reasons behind the premium charge but the mm. truth is the less the premium happier is the client here yeah what's happened yeah yeah so sharon uh, uh you you are you've got experience in the construction industry if i'm a project manager um i do one construction project i get a rate of say let's say 0 0.15 i go into the next project you come up and then say i'm supposed to pay 0 0.2 percent i'm still the same client um how do i look at this is there a way of you justifying to me why the price for project a should be different from project b it will depend. Maybe uh, for Project A, the market uh, market trends or market rates were different, and uh, maybe the Project A, I don't know, had a lot of claims, and uh, Project B is uh, because it's the same client and similar projects. Then um, the underwriter would be would deem it fit to increase the rate to be able to cover a bit of the losses that uh, they incurred in Project A. So Kelvin, it won't be anything to do with your feelings at that point or <laughs> budgeting a budget and you feel that I have to increase my premiums here. Because remember, we, we, we are not operating in isolation. We have got clients to deal with. We want them to get to an understanding of this is what could potentially be happening. Why? I would get a lower price than the next insured, or why I would get a, a different price from my previous project. What 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 else could be happening? Over and above what, what uh, Sharon has alluded to, 
I think the, the other aspect is then to say the risk that Project A had uh, and what Project B then has is different. I'll give an example to say um, the risk that, say, you're building a normal dwelling house uh, is different from the risk that is associated with, let's say, building a high-rise building or let's say a bridge or a dam. The mm -hmm. risk in itself is different in terms of then saying the exposure that the, the insurers will face is much higher than, um, let's say, road construction, for instance. That could be something else that is then uh, different from your from one project to the next. Okay, so it could be a difference in the risk classification, as you are saying, the, the amount of exposure that each risk is bringing to the pool is, um, uh, is different, which necessitates a different price, uh, or it could be the, the, the losses that each, each type of project, as Aaron has said, is bringing could be different. Uh, Charles, who, who is the best judge of what a good rate is? Basically, to me, it should be the uh, <laughs> the client, perhaps, yeah? uh, because <laughs> that's one. It's it's a it's a bit challenge, uh, challenging because uh, the the client as 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 a client can basically come with uh, tell you that this is a too expensive sort of a uh, price. So, or mm. uh, can tell you that this is uh, basically. Uh, fair 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 premium uh, according to, to the budget of the, of the clients so that that that's perhaps i can say so sharon you are the underwriters your market requests a quotation you do a quotation the broker comes back and says yeah the client they say i've got so much budget right? um uh, this this is my budget <laughs> So uh, as far as possible, like, we, we try to accommodate, maybe uh, if we cannot go as low as they want, maybe we, would, we, we will adjust the terms like increase deductible or some stuff like that or put some exclusion to decrease our own exposure, um, which would be unable to get closer or even to match the target premium but for me god uh, when i asked the client about their budget or target premium they said yeah. they don't have a budget and <laughs> they say the cheapest that you can <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yara how do you differentiate that uh, i'm getting from sharon that there's a bit of flexibility uh, obviously when you do your numbers i think you leave room for for a discount how do you differentiate that from cash flow underwriting? Okay. You know what we try to do most of the times? Mm -hmm. We cannot just go to the client and say no, right? And as Sharon said, we try to play around with the deductibles. We mm -hmm. try to find uh, extensions and exclusions that will protect us at some point, or even introduce some sublimits that will uh, also protect us at, uh, at, the, at a certain point. That's how we try to play around with it. Yeah. Because if we just go and say no, we lose all the business across. So we need to balance a bit. You need to balance. Even knowing that at some point it will affect our profitability. But for certain reasons, we try to find uh, uh, ways to accommodate. For example, here in Mozambique, we are prone to cyclones. Yeah. And uh, premium rates continue low. So we are trying to set up cyclone access in all policies that we have in order at least to balance the level of claims that we have been receiving. But it's also been a challenge to mm -hmm. make the, the client understand that there is need to do that. Yeah. Otherwise, we, we suffer losses after losses and it, it will not be a profitable business. We are in business, it is true. Yeah, so that flexibility is, is a necessary component of every business. You can't operate any business if you are rigid yeah. on the pricing. But I just want to get a sense of how do you differentiate that flexibility from cash flow underwriting? Uh, Kelvin? Yes, um, if I may chip in there. Um, you see, the main purpose, um, generally what we've seen in terms of when uh, somebody is uh, cash flow underwriting, I think the major purpose would then be to I think raise um, the revenue in the short term, mm -hmm. um, which is different from um, what Yara and Sharon are saying to say, no, look, we are putting this risk in a pool of risks. Mm -hmm. So 
in terms of how you then compromise, uh, your compromising should not affect your overall uh, pool of risks that you are holding. To say, um, like Sharon alluded to, to say you increase the deductible, for instance, or you put in certain exclusions or exclude certain covers. What it's merely trying to do is to to align the premium to the risk that is then it's bringing into my pool of risks. Um, so different from cash flow, where in the sole purpose is really just to uh, generate revenue and not necessarily looking at it from a risk perspective. Yeah, uh, Charles, you have obviously witnessed some cash flow underwriting. How do you differentiate it from just being flexible, just being a flexible underwriter? I think, uh, as uh, the previous uh, speaker has uh, mentioned, I think yeah, it is it is very critical. Of course, flexibility is it's important because we are in the business. We need uh, to sustain uh, uh, the business, but you know. We are not supposed to be, you know, to be uh, too much flexible. Uh, yeah. So we we need to put some shield uh, uh, on us, uh, like what uh, Yara uh, said. We put some deductible. We, we put some exclusion, uh, so that even though we are being flexible, basically we we are not flexible uh, uh, too much to you know, to damage our uh, ultimate result at the end of the year. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I can say. Yeah. Uh, Sharon, would you, if pushed to the limits, would, would you do cash flow underwriting? For me, uh, there's, there's a minimum that you need to go because uh, at the end of the day, we are not in charity, but we, are, we, we have a business <laughs> to maintain. And <laughs> to, at the end of the day, we need to make profit as uh, the business would not be sustainable. So we need to find the, the right middle in, not we, like um, Yara said, we cannot say no right away to the client risk us losing business, like the whole portfolio. But we try to with them and see, like to show them that we are accommodating on our side and if they can meet us in the middle as well.